When you go to sell your business, there's risk in that transaction, right? You're selling the business. There's, there's a risk associated to it. And it turns out you can actually buy an insurance policy to help mitigate that risk. So in that whole, you know, advanced planning wealth, strategy, uh, you mentioned taxes. How how are you guys handling um, the the tax deferral, the capital gains tax when people liquidate either an asset or a business, succession planning, estate planning? How are you guys handling the estate tax and the 1031 um, tax deferral strategies? What's your biggest frustration with the, with the 1031 right now? Um, you know what, when it comes to that, I mean, some of the strategies we're using is, you know, we're big fans of setting up your own insurance company something called a captive insurance company where you pay premiums to yourself. And when you go to sell your business, there's risk in that transaction, right? You're selling the business. There's there's risk associated to it. And it turns out you can actually buy an insurance policy to help mitigate that risk. Well, if you can pay the premium to yourself, that's a great thing to do. And so that's one of the strategies we do is we actually are able to reduce the capital gains from the year of the sale by buying a big insurance policy to protect against anything going sideways. That's one of the strategies. Another big strategy we use is trying to take as much money off the table, get them into qualified retirement plans, or even the charitable piece and and looking at different trust structures, different ways to to lower the business of the value, freeze the, the, the business, get it to the next generation. And then, of course, there's deferred sales trust that work really well, too. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Um, you know, the, the deferred sales trust is our kind of bread and butter. Um, obviously we'll do a 1031, right. If it makes sense, we're finding that right now it's hard in the market, um, to, to 1031, you know, with the time constraints and with the like kind and you yeah. know, all that kind of stuff. And, and you know about that, um, which, which I would tell you, that is the biggest frustration of 1031s right now. It's so what do you go into? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, that's the, that's the hardest part for sure. And, and, and they give you 45 days to, you know, yeah get engaged in 180 days, get married, you know? So yeah, exactly. it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's with, really a, with a very now. small pool of choices. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, but you mentioned something interesting that I, I and we're kind of running out of time. So I, I want to be kind of quick about this, but, uh, being your own life insurance. Yeah. Exp- explain that. Uh, not life insurance. This is more for risks that aren't necessarily covered by your traditional insurance policies. So for example, you're running a business, you've got business interruption risk, you've got brand reputation risk. I, I don't know if any of your listeners remember or you remember, there was a dentist who went hunting in Africa and shot a lion, right? Cecil the lion, he came back, people weren't so happy he shot that lion. His dental practice literally disintegrated overnight. That's a brand reputation risk. There's business interruption. There's, you know, officers and employment liability. There's, there's all these different risks that you face in your business. Well, what about if you could set up your own insurance company, write premiums to yourself, manage those funds, and then down the road, take a tax-free loan from your insurance company? Massively beneficial. That's interesting. I just heard another, another guest um, on our podcast uh, earlier today. Um, told me you could buy life insurance, like, like from people that are about to, you know, about to oh, die. Yeah. 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 Viatical yeah. settlements. You can buy policies. Yeah. There, there's yeah. all sorts of different things that can be done. So those are, those are some interesting ideas. So you, so this strategy is you basically set up an insurance company to, to basically against certain risks that aren't covered like brand, uh, like Brand reputation, yeah. supply yeah. chain interruption. If you're a dentist, you can put a dental warranty program in there if you've got to retreat you know, your, your patients at some point. And you're going to write premiums to your own insurance company. You'll pay claims because if you're not paying claims, it's not a legitimate insurance company. So you will pay claims. That's exactly what you want to do. They're, they're regulated. They, they, you got to follow the rules. You, you don't want to abuse them. But used well, they're a great strategy. Interesting.